Hello, uh, this is Dr. Marzon from CIC, Complete Injury Centers. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, cases that uh, we see them very frequently uh, at this uh, office uh, and we treat them on uh, a daily basis, basically. And uh, that is uh, basically having pain in the area and traveling the pain to the leg somewhere. And uh, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, what are the possibilities and uh, by do saying that uh, it is very important for the clinician to listen to the patient how they describe the pain and uh, also uh, knowing that what is the onset and what makes it worse what makes it uh, better all of those give us some clues to see that uh, what type of issue the patient might be having. But again, uh, the complexity of the problem uh, varies from patient to patient, and sometimes they have multiple areas that they have issue with. So we have to see that what they have so we can have the best uh, treatment plan for the patient to get better and recover faster. Let me explain to you uh, what we are talking about. And this model shows that we have the hip during right here, we have the pelvis right here, we have the sacrum right here, we have the lumbar spine right here, and there are the nerves, which are called spinal nerves. They exit between the vertebrae, and uh, there is a hole between the vertebrae that these nerves travel. And uh, between those vertebrae, we have discs, and here are the discs that, uh, between the two vertebrae in this case, and here's the nerve that exits at the hole, which is the foramen, between the two vertebrae. One is on this side, one is on the other side. So these are the spinal nerves. And uh, then we're going to be talking about a joint right here, which is called sacroiliac joint. It is at this area right here. It is a distance this much, and usually a patient is going to say, oh, well, I have a pain, not in the middle, but on the side, right at this area. And uh, there is another area that we are going to talk about is uh, this area right here where the sciatic nerve exit and it goes to the leg. And this muscle right here is called performance. And, uh, and this performance muscle, it is, is the muscle that the sciatic nerve passes by through it, around it, and it is different from patient to the patient, from individual to individual. And then we have this bony structure right here is called the ischial tuberosity, which we're going to talk about that when we're going to be covering uh, these issues on PowerPoint presentation. So uh, the patient comes with the different scenarios. They have, they're going to be showing uh, different type of symptoms and based on what they show and Afterward, uh, doing the examination, uh, we're going to see that what the problem uh, is actually uh, be in the area. And uh, so, if the sacroiliac joint is the problem, the pain would be in this area and goes down to the side of the leg and it goes to the, knees, uh, the knee area, not to the foot. If the patient has a problem with the uh, spinal nerve, it depends which level of the spinal nerve is the problem, they're going to have a different type of, different areas of distribution of the symptoms. And we are talking about the sensory uh, in this case, but each of those nerves and the uh, spinal nerves or the different nerves that uh, they are dealing with the different part of the body, uh, they have sensory and motor. So uh, we're going to be looking at the sensory distribution to see that how that is going to be give, uh, giving us the hint. Because usually the patient comes, they don't say that I have the weak muscle usually, but they're going to say that oh, I have a pain in this area. And uh, then you can follow up with the uh, questioning uh, the patient that if the muscle is weak and then doing the examination, we're going to see that what the uh, muscles, uh, what type of muscles and which area of the muscles they are weak. And uh, so if this performance that we're going to be looking at the at that a little, a little bit more detail on the PowerPoint, you see that the sciatic nerve, which is right here, it is very close to it. And uh, so if uh, this muscle is become irritated for some, some reason, the, this uh, sciatic nerve can also be uh, affected. And uh, due to the compression, if it is going through it, or due to the some type of uh, pressure that you're going to be uh, getting onto this one uh, that if the muscle is tight or uh, shortened. Then we're going to be talking about this uh, hip joint 
which is right here and this hip joint right here is very very loose compared to other joints the shoulder and the hip are very loose joints and that's why the uh, patients they get a problem with that very often and uh, again with that one the pain that the patient is going to feel is going to be in this area right here the pain that the sciatic nerve is going to cause it varies it depends on what uh, part of the nerve is being affected and how much of that is affected and uh, then the distribution of this nerve is going to be coming from the area of the uh, glute that goes down to the foot. So let me uh, cover this uh, uh, causes and the, and the symptoms uh, one more time and the cause of the damage to this uh, smaller nerves could be the disc and this protrusion that uh, each of these uh, spinal nerves will cover different area of the body so you need to know uh, what part of the uh, body the symptoms are covered by each individual spinal nerve then we have the sacroiliac joint right here which is at this point and that irritation of the joint causes the pain that goes here and it goes to the knee area if it is the performance, the patient is going to be having some uh, pain in the glute, to the sacrum, to the hip, and if it is affecting the sciatic nerve, and the pain is going to go down, and it goes below the knee to the foot. And uh, one of the nerves right here, actually two of the nerves, uh, they are having some overlapping with the sciatic nerve, and that is the confusion among the pr uh, practitioners and the clinicians. That is the L5-S1, and uh, S1 mainly. Uh, they have overlapping with the sighting nerve. But sighting nerve, which is made of multiple spinal nerves, they are having a greater uh, area to uh, affect. So we're going to be talking about that uh, momentarily on the PowerPoint presentation. I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you. We are back to uh, our discussion to continue with the psychic nerve damage and uh, other issues which are similar to psychic nerve symptoms. Uh, again, this is the complete injury centers. The topic is sciatica and distinguishing from other type of pain. And uh, this is uh, Dr. Myersman. And uh, let's continue with the PowerPoint. Here are the uh, areas that we are interested to talk about uh, initially and here is the sacral iliac joint is between the sacrum and ilium and uh, this joint right here is very powerful joint which is holding the upper part of the body and connecting it to the uh, lower extremities and uh, so it should be very strong to hold uh, our weight uh, on two legs and uh, this joint can be easily uh, irritated by uh, any type of accidents, falling, auto accidents, sport accidents, and even bad posture, or someone has the scoliosis uh, in the spine, and that put the pressure on uh, one side or both sides of these uh, joints. And uh, the other one that uh, we are interested in is to talk about is the spinal nerves. And the spinal nerves uh, exit between vertebrae, and there's a hole on the side of the vertebrae, which is called foramina. And uh, that uh, is the hole holds this uh, spinal nerves, uh, and these nerves, they have <coughs> a sensory as well as the uh, motor function. And therefore, uh, if there is a, a compression or irritation to this nerve, um, it is going to be affecting uh, sensor and motor uh, most of the time. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail as we go on. The other thing that we are interested in is the uh, sighting nerve to uh, discuss. And uh, the one thing uh, we're going to come, up, uh, come out of this uh, uh, slide PowerPoint page is that the sighting nerve... Uh, is not the same as the spinal nerves. And the spinal nerves, as you notice right here, from L4, L5, S1, S2, S3, and then all these nerves, they come together and make one nerve. And uh, this nerve right here is not the same as the spinal nerves coming out from between the vertebrae. But the spinal nerves, 
they combine and uh, they make up uh, different nerves, in this case, sciatic nerve. And also, it is important to notice that uh, each spinal nerve may make up more than one nerve. But we'll see how that goes. The other thing that we are interested in is the piriformis muscle right here. And the piriformis muscle is the muscle between the sacrum and that goes to the uh, hip uh, joint uh, and uh, attaches to the bone. Sacroiliac joint dysfunction, which we have it right here between the sacrum and ilium of the pelvis. As we discussed before, uh, it has, if there's irritation right here, damage, uh, arthritic uh, uh, um, deformation and uh, joint dysfunction, uh, the pain that the patient usually uh, referred to would be in the buttock area where the joint is, and then it uh, radiates to the side of the uh, upper part of the leg, the thigh, and then uh, outer part of the knee. And uh, so uh, this pain, uh, it will not get reach the ankle or the foot. So uh, it is, it is a, one of the key to this is that uh, to distinguish this one from the others is the, the extent of the uh, pain or numbness or uh, as well as we call it the paresthesia, any type of sensory dysfunction uh, that does not reach the ankle and the foot. This one is the spinal nerve dysfunction. As we talk about that, the spinal nerve is not uh, the same as other nerves that we are familiar with. They are numbered, and uh, if they are coming from sacrum, it's called S, and then there are different levels, S1, S2, S3, or four, and so forth and so on. If it's coming from the neck, it's called C1, C1, C2, C3, so far and so on. Thoracic would be T, and the lumbar would be L. And uh, so uh, these nerves, they have uh, this different type of, types of uh, distribution, and S1 is very powerful nerve that uh, reaches all the way to the uh, pinky toe and uh, to the side and also to a big part of the foot. And uh, it, as it travels down and this uh, spinal nerve, if it is irritated, and in this picture it shows that uh, it can be irritated by this protrusion. Uh, this is the annual fibrosis, uh, which is very tough uh, tissue that holds this, uh, uh, it's called the nucleus palposis, which is very uh, liquidish fluid in it. And uh, if uh, there is a damage to the lower part of the uh, spine, in this case that we are interested in, uh, this uh, uh, nucleus, uh, I'm sorry, the nucleus palposis, it can be uh, penetrated out and uh, give to uh, area where the spinal nerve is passing by. And here's the foramen between the two vertebrae that we talk about, the hole. And if this penetration goes back and to the side, which is, which is called the posterior lateral, back to the side, it can uh, irritate this uh, spinal nerve. And in this case, uh, it will be S1 right here that uh, is irritated and the patient can feel not only <clears throat> to the back of the thigh, it reaches to the foot and to the side of the foot in this case. S1 nerve, spinal nerve, which is affected by a disc protrusion uh, that is happening between L5 and S1 vertebrae, and which is going to be the lower part of the spine. This picture shows that we have <clears throat> sighting nerve. Here's a sighting nerve right here. Here's a sighting nerve right here. Sighting nerve is different from a spinal nerves. A spinal nerves combination of those will come and make up the sighting nerve in this case. And that is uh, uh, going to have a different distribution, different symptoms, which mimics uh, most of the time with the L5 S1. <coughs> um, uh, is, is spinal nerve damage. And uh, so uh, if somebody has the S1 most of the time and uh, nerve root or spinal nerve damage, 
the symptom is very similar to sciatic nerve, but they're not in the same uh, location. So for that reason, uh, it is very important to distinguish between the cause of the uh, issue that the treatment would be uh, uh, being designed uh, for that specific cause. And uh, so if the damage is right here, you don't want to uh, pay attention to this as much, or if the, the damage is right here, you don't want to pay attention to this area because you are uh, treating a different uh, area that is not the source of the damage. And here is the sighting nerve. And uh, this sighting nerve, how can be irritated? And uh, many times you see that uh, it is because of this muscle that we talked about on the previous slide, which is called the piriformis muscle uh, that has attachment to the sacrum to the, and also to the side of the hip joint. And uh, here is the sighting nerve uh, that is uh, sitting right here and has a distribution that goes all the way to the foot. And uh, this sighting nerve irritation, uh, because if it is uh, irritated because of the muscle right here, it is called the performance syndrome, which is very commonly seen in patients. And uh, especially with uh, patients that they cross their legs or they have long uh, lasting sitting uh, job uh, um, uh, uh, profession and, uh, and all of those can cause this uh, muscle right here, performance muscle to become tightened, shortened, uh, weakened, and spastic, and all of those uh, issue to this performance muscle can cause irritation to the sighting nerve. If the sighting nerve is uh, issue right here, uh, the area of the symptom would be much greater than L5 or S1 itself. So the gray area that the patient has issue with, uh, it is uh, uh, giving us a direction that uh, the cause of the damage is the sighting nerve. And again, uh, it is important to note that the patient might have a spinal nerve and sighting nerve and performance issue and uh, and the sacroiliac in injury and all of those in one patient and we see that very often and therefore it is very important to uh, tackle and and treat every single of those causes because uh, if you have a combination of issues in the patient uh, treating one will not be sufficient to resolve the problem Here's the sighting nerve location. So which one is it? Is it the spinal nerve, which is between the two vertebrae? Is it sacroiliac joint uh, issue that uh, is between the sacrum and the ilium of the pelvis? Is it the sighting nerve that is uh, uh, exiting at the lower part of the pelvis? and it goes uh, around uh, within and uh, any different uh, orientation possible uh, that is different from patient to patient around the performance. But in addition to that, we might have, or we do have patients that they have hip injuries, and that hip injuries could be because of falling from motorcycle, bicycle, sports, uh, and even in the auto accidents, which uh, the knee hits the dashboard and it jams this uh, joint right here. And also arthritis, aging, wear and tear, and uh, it is all <clears throat> could be possible uh, cause of the joint uh, issue in the hip. So here is the pelvis right here and here's the femur right here. And uh, there's a joint which is uh, uh, having a cartilaginous uh, coverage which can become thin uh, and dur during the <coughs> aging and uh, thinning out of this uh, cartilage uh, can cause the uh, space between the uh, two bony structure right here to become uh, reduced and it is going to be affecting the blood flow in the area and therefore <coughs> over time it becomes very irritated and painful 
And the pain that uh, in this picture it shows in the pinkish area with the hip injury, it would be in the area around the hip, back of the buttock and the front, which is the groin area. But let me show you this picture again, and that the performance, which is right here, uh, it is the rotator muscle to the hip. And therefore, uh, if there is the irritation to the hip itself, it causes the muscles which are attached to this one uh, pretty much, uh, and uh, it is always affecting this performance muscle due to the joint issue in the hip. And this peripheral muscle, in order to protect the joint, it becomes tightened or also because the joint is not uh, functioning well over time, it causes this muscle to become weakened and shortened. And uh, due to that, uh, it is going to be also causing the sighting nerve to become uh, compressed. And, uh, and therefore, the hip joint, it is causing this performance muscle to become tightened, shortened, and spastic, uh, or a combination of all of those, and which is going to cause the sighting nerve to uh, be irritated, and it causes sciatica uh, due to the hip damage. So it is important to distinguish what the problem is in order to fix the problem. And uh, again, we talk about the piriformis uh, syndrome. And in this case, is due to the hip uh, dysfunction. Finally, we're going to talk about this one, which is very important uh, nowadays uh, in our uh, social lifestyle. It is the sitting and lack of walking and movements of the legs. And uh, because of that, this, I'm sure uh, all of you are familiar with this muscle right here, there are glutes, and there are three of those, which I don't want to be boring you with the names. They're huge, and they should be huge, and uh, they're strong muscles to, for the walking, and gates, and balance, and all sort of things, but because of the sitting and uh, not being as active uh, as we should be, these muscles become weakened, and become small. And one of the things that this muscle, this, this muscle are going to do, besides every other things that we just mentioned, like the gaze and balance and posture and everything else, uh, it is also a cushion uh, tissue right here that when you sit, your uh, uh, bony structure right here, and uh, this bony structure is the bony structure that you sit on it, on the chair. And so if you don't have a cushion muscle right here that holds and uh, does not uh, put the pressure on this uh, bony structure, uh, it, this nerve that comes out can be compressed against this bone. It's a sciatic nerve. So the sciatica, not, it could be caused by multiple different ways. And uh, we talk about the performance syndrome, and now we are saying that uh, if the gluteal muscles, uh, they are weakened, it, it causes a loss of the cushionness in the buttock area that the, when the patient sits, uh, this bone structure can cause the pressure on this nerve or the chair that you're sitting can easily compress this nerve. So it is very important to uh, do the gluteal exercises. As you can see, in uh, you know uh, um, younger people or older people in the middle age, uh, the buttock size are not uh, as uh, big as it should be because of the loss of the muscle mass in this area due to the uh, lack of movements, lack of exercise. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, review, which is which was fast, but uh, hopefully it will be uh, educational to uh, you that uh, what the problem you have and how we are trying to help you with the uh, case that uh, we are trying to fix it for you. And also, hopefully, it is uh, uh, educational to the uh, practitioners and the clinicians uh, that uh, would help them to distinguish 
between the different colors of the buttock and leg pains. You have a wonderful day.